Welcome to my CBSE English teacher. Today let's learn the lesson The Rat Trap by Selma Lagerlof from class 12 Flamingo. About the author, Selma Lagerlof was a Swedish writer whose stories have been translated into many languages. This story is set in the middle of the mines of Sweden which are rich in iron ore. The story is narrated in the manner of a fairy tale. It gives us the message that the emotions of love and acceptance can reform others. Let's look at the theme. The theme of the story is that most human beings are prone to fall into the trap of material benefit. However, every human being has an essential goodness that can be awakened through understanding and love. A human being has the tendency to redeem himself from dishonest ways. Summary of the story Once there was a man who used to sell small rat traps made of wire. These rat traps were made by him in his free time. He used to collect the materials required by begging from stores or big farms. Still, his business was not earning him any profits. Therefore, he had to beg or steal in order to survive. His clothes were old and torn. His cheeks were lowered inside due to malnutrition and one could easily see the hunger in his eyes. The life of the rat trap seller was very sad and boring. He was homeless and slowly with heavy feet he walked along the road lost in his own thoughts. But one day he got lost in a series of thoughts which he found very interesting. The man was thinking about the rat trap and suddenly a thought came to his mind that the whole world which includes land, sea, cities and villages was similar to a rat trap. He thought that there was no meaning of the existence of this world. It was nothing but a temptation just like cheese and pork which we offer as bait to catch the rat. So according to him, as soon as someone tries to comfort himself with joy, food and shelter, he at once get trapped into this rat trap which is known as world. No one in the world had ever been kind to the rat trap seller. So he started thinking ill of others. It became a favorite pastime for him. During dull moments, these thoughts made him happy. So he continued thinking ill of those who were known to him. He would imagine those people who were already trapped in the tra trap of worldly things and also those who were about to get trapped in it. One evening, the rat trap seller was walking very slowly. He saw a little grey cottage by the road. He went up to the cottage and knocked at the door to get shelter for the night. Generally, he was not helped by anyone, but this time he was welcomed by the old man into his cottage. He was a lonely old man without wife and kids. The old man was happy to get the company that night. So the old man gave him some porridge to eat and then shared his tobacco with the guest. After this, both played cards till bedtime. The rat trap seller felt that the old man was not only liberal in sharing his porridge but also his secrets. He tells him that he was a rich man when he used to work on the rented farm. As he was old now and couldn't work, he had to depend upon his cow for his living. The cow gave enough milk every day to be sold in the factory that produced cheese and cream. The old man said that he was able to earn 30 kroners last month because of the milk. The rat trap seller did not believe the old man's story that the cow could earn him so much. Therefore, the old man took a leather pouch which hung on a window and took out three notes of 10 kroner each which were old and crushed. He showed those currency notes to make him believe his words and then kept them back in the pouch. Next morning, both the rat trap seller and the crofter woke up early as the crofter was in a hurry to milk his cow. Even the rat trap seller felt that as the owner of the house had awakened, so he should also leave the bed. They both came out of the cottage at the same time. The old man locked the door and went to his work. The rat trap seller also thanked him and went on his way.
After about half an hour, the rat trap seller returned to the cottage and broke down the window pane where the pouch hung. He took away the money, kept it in his pocket, put the pouch back as its place and walked off. The peddler was quite happy as he had money in his pocket. He then thought of walking through the forest as it was unsafe to walk on the highway because he feared being caught. Initially, it was not difficult to walk through the forest, but later on it got confusing and he forgot his way. He tried hard to walk in the right direction, but in vain. At this point of time, he started thinking that now he himself was caught in the trap of the world just like other people. He was fooled by the bait of money which he had stolen from the old man's house. The forest seemed like a prison full of trunks and branches. It was like an impassable prison. It was December and got dark early. His hope of escaping the forest reduced. The danger to his life increased and there was no way left for him. He was so tired and terrified that he thought his end was near. As he laid his head on the ground, he heard a very strong regular sound. It was a hard sound that was coming at regular intervals. He soon realized that these sounds were the sounds of hammer strokes from an iron mill. He thought that he could find some people nearby. With this thought, he gathered some strength and started walking with great difficulty towards the sound. The Ramsjo Iron Works was a large plant which had shut down few years ago. It had smelter, rolling mill and a forge. In summers, long flat bottom boats carrying the material would come down to the canal, go to a large inland lake for supplying material to the mill. In winters, the roads turned black because of the coal dust that came due to the transportation of the charcoal crates. One evening near Christmas time, the master smith and his helper were sitting in the dark forge near the furnace. He was wearing a long shirt and a pair of wooden shoes. Both of them were waiting for the pig iron which was put inside the furnace fire to be ready to put on the anvil. They took turns to stir the liquid which was very hot. As they could bear the heat for a few minutes, each of them would return sweating profusely. One could hear different types of sounds in the forge. There was a big bellow which was blowing air in the fire with great sound. Also, there was the sound of cracking coal. One could hear the bang of the charcoal which was being shoveled by the fire boy. The sounds which were coming from outside the mill. These were of the waterfall, the high speed north wind which hit the raindrops against the brick tiled roof. It was due to these different types of sounds that the blacksmith didn't realize that a man had opened the gate of the forge and had entered till he came and stood near the furnace. Many homeless people used to get attracted to the lights of the forge which peeked through the window panes which were covered with black powder of burnt coal. They would seek shelter there. They would warm themselves with the help of the burning fire. As the blacksmiths were accustomed to visitors, they were indifferent to the man. They just looked at him. The rat trap seller's appearance was similar to that of other wanderers. He had a long beard, was dirty, wore torn worn out clothes and had a bunch of rat traps hanging from his chest. The peddler tried to seek the permission from the blacksmith to stay in the forge for a night. He allowed the peddler with an arrogant consent by just nodding and didn't say a single word to him. The peddler also said nothing because his main aim was to warm himself and sleep. The owner of the Ramsjo iron mill in those days was a very ambitious person whose aim was to sell only the finest iron into the market. Therefore, he used to keep a check on the workers both during the night and the day. The owner was on a night inspection visit when the peddler entered the forge. Unlike the blacksmiths, the iron master at once noticed the peddler who was sitting so close to the furnace that steam was coming out of his torn clothes. He not only went near him but also removed the wanderer's hat 
that was bent to one side so that he could see the man's face clearly. When the ironmaster took off the peddler's hat, he mistook him as an old acquaintance, Niels Olaf. The peddler didn't know him, nor had he seen this man before. But he thought that if this man mistook him as his old companion and gave him some money out of pity, then it would be a good thing. Therefore, he didn't let him know that he had mistaken him as Nils Olaf. Do look out for the part 2 of this video to know the complete story. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.